guys, welcome to lesson number five in the Introduction to Aerospace Engineering series. Today we will talk about control volume and control surface, because we will need this knowledge in order to derive the principle of continuity in the next video. The concept of control volume and control surface helps us simplify the notion of airflow and derive the useful equations in aerodynamics. Let's say we want to solve some aerodynamics problem. We have the airfoil, the airflow around it, but how can we actually quantify what happens to the airflow? In order to simplify what happens with the airflow, the first aerodynamics scientists invented the concept of a control volume. A control volume is just an imaginary volume that encloses the air in the area you're interested in. In simple terms, you can think of a control volume just as an imaginary box around the airfoil or any other region you are trying to analyze. For example, here we put a control volume around the whole airfoil, but also we can put it in some other area just in the airflow. Obviously, this control volume is smaller than the one around the airfoil, but this control volume will analyze the properties of air passing through here. So it's just one stream of air, so to say. So the concept of a control volume lets you focus on the air inside the control volume and solve the problem. Now, usually it's assumed that the control volume is fixed in space. So it just stays where you put it, let's say it has some legs, and the air just flows through it. Then with the aerodynamics laws that we will learn in the next video, we can analyze this flow of air through a fixed control volume. We will be able to solve for the properties of air inside the control volume or on the borders. But in other problems, we might need to assume that the control volume moves with the airflow. In that case, it will be more difficult to analyze the properties of air inside the control volume because as the control volume moves through the air, the properties of air change inside the control volume. So for the purpose of this introductory course in aerospace engineering, we will not talk about problems with the moving control volume. Now, how does the air go through the control volume? Since this is an imaginary box, the air can move through any surface of this imaginary control volume. So the sides of the control volume are called control surfaces. We will learn in the next video that the most important surfaces are the front surface and the back surface. And we might need to use different control surfaces in order to analyze the airflow in different problems. Generally, the control volume is denoted by capital letter V and the control surface is denoted by capital letter S as in any other physics problem. So for now, this is all you need to know about the control volume and control surface and we will use this notion in the next video when we derive the principle of continuity one of the most important laws in aerodynamics. If this is your first time on my channel and you missed any previous lessons, you can catch up here and here where we characterize the wing and the properties of the airflow. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified when the next video comes out. So see you next week!